Hello again. We're graphing inequalities today. And um, over my years of teaching, I've kind of approached this problem in a different sort of way because I realize that not everybody thinks the same way on this. And this can be very troublesome for students. But I think the way that I teach it, well, I don't think, I believe the way that I teach it is actually pretty solid overall. And I look back at the way I used to teach it and think to myself, what? what? What was I thinking as I was doing this? Making it more difficult than it had to be. Uh, with that in mind, we're going to graph inequalities, but we're not going to graph them on a number line. We're going to graph them on a Cartesian plane, an x, y axis. So with, well, we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, in order to do this, though, you have to solve for y. You have to get y by itself. Well, fortunately, in our first problem, y is by itself. So we're going to go ahead and do this. And we're going to create ourselves an x, y uh, plot. And if you don't remember that, uh, check back on uh, graphing linear equations. I, I post everything based on chapter or particular topic, so you should be fine. The y-intercept of this problem works the same way as a slope-intercept formula. It's, it's basically the same thing, except there's a shading at the end, which students don't like, but it's not too bad. So we're going to plot the y-intercept first, which is negative 3. So that's what we do. And then from the y-intercept, we're going to talk about the slope. And the slope is 4 over 1. So that means we're going to rise 4 over 1. 1 two, three, got to go another one, four over one. A few things to keep in mind though. If it does not have a line underneath it, if it's a greater or it's a less than, it's a broken line when you're graphing. If it's a uh, less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to, it's a solid line. And uh, theoretically speaking, the broken line means that it does not include the solution and the open line, I'm sorry, the solid line means it does include the solution. Something for you to think about. It's like open circle and closed circle. Open circle means it does not include it. Closed circle means that it does. Same thing with a uh, uh, broken line. It does not include the line. Solid line, it does include the line. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I'll plot this. And, you know, use a straight edge. Make sure it's fine. It doesn't have to be as perfect, as accurate, but it, it should be relatively decent. I connect that with a broken line. That's exactly what I'm doing. When it's uh, greater than or when it's less than is a broken line. I have a fan club outside, so I've got to stop smiling. And when I have a greater than or equal to or a less than or equal to, it's a solid line. Okay, with that said, uh, there is one more thing you have to do. And I remember I used to use a joke when I first started teaching. I'm like, you've got to test the lattice point, the lattice point. And I'm thinking to myself, what was I thinking as I was doing that? Uh, there's a much easier way to do it. There is, you can use a testing point, and maybe your teacher will like using a testing point. They'll say, test the point here. If it's true, that's where you shade. If it's false, you shade opposite. I don't really like thinking about it like that anymore, because I think it's very difficult for students. What I like doing instead is this. When you get y by itself, and it's on the left-hand side, if it's greater than, it means you shade to the north. Greater than. If it's less than, you shade to the south. Less than. So that's what we have to do here. This one is greater than, so we're going to shade north of the line. Anything north of this line right here where the y-intercept is. So I'm going to go ahead and you know, be an art artiste of sorts. But it's not just shading this line here. It's shading everything north of this point right here. So everything on this side of the graph is fair game. Nothing on this side, because this side is south of this point. So I can't shade anything south of this point. But I can shade everything north of this point. That's what I use. It's basically like a compass. This means north. If it was less than, it would mean south. And that's what we're going to have on the next one. So it'll work out perfectly. Whew. Even when I don't mean to come up with these examples, I still do. Next one, I want to graph, but in order to graph, I have to first solve for y. And I suppose some people can say, can I do that in, uh, can, I, can I graph an inequality in standard form? You know, where you figure out an x-intercept and a y-intercept, which we had, already, we had already done. Yeah, but this is the way that most people just use it. And in the end, it actually is pretty easy, and it's easier for that matter. So I'm going to subtract x on both sides. And I get 2y is less than or equal to negative x. You can put plus 0, but that's pointless. And now you want to still get y by itself, so divide by 2. 
and you get y is less than or equal to negative x over 2. Actually, it's negative 1x over 2. Now, I'm going to go ahead and graph this now. Okay. What is the y-intercept? Well, I don't, there is no y-intercept. Yeah, there is, but it's plus 0. If they don't show you the y-intercept, it's automatically at 0. And then the slope from the y-intercept is down 1, right 2. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's a solid line because it has a line underneath, and that's the way that I used to remember it. If there's no line underneath, it means it's not solid. If there's a line underneath, it means it is solid. And it's less than or equal to, which means you're going to graph south of the y-intercept. Let me say that again. You're going to graph south of the y-intercept. If it's greater than, you graph north of the y-intercept. If it's less than, you graph south. Same thing here. We graph north of the y-intercept, not south, because it was greater. This one is less than or equal to, so we graph south. Done. Brief introduction into it. We're going to try a couple more graphs, a special graphs that students usually get wrong when they first see them after a while. So it's good to refresh your memory on how to do them. That said, have a good day for now. Goodbye.